How's the crypto debt market? Like, what's the structure? How does everything work? I think the use cases for, for borrowing are very different depending if it's retail or institutional. On the retail side, clients are majority borrowing because they have a use case for dollars. They have a lot of crypto assets. In some instances, that's the majority of their net wealth. And they want to collateralize their, their Bitcoin, ETH, or at times outside of Ledin, but with maybe other lenders, different types of assets, and then uh, borrow dollars for all types of things. Uh, we ask our clients what they're using the, the dollars for. 80% of them are using them for real world experience. Expenses. So this may be buying real estate, diversifying into other types of TradFi investments, or the 20% sometimes going longer in the asset that they already own. On the institutional side, Sandra can, can speak more to this, uh, but generally it'd be lending to market makers, you know, additional uh, leverage to the trades that they're already doing. Uh, so market making across different exchanges. As of late, with the ETFs coming to the market, uh, currently there's a structural issue where as new funds add more uh, uh, ETFs uh, to their portfolio, they have to buy Bitcoin, of course. And because this intersects with TradFi, the settlement timelines are off. So they need to pre-fund the trade. And that's where lending can be helpful because they don't want to take Bitcoin risk, but they're, they have to buy the Bitcoin ahead of time and settle after. So it's those types of market inefficiencies that the lending markets really help add efficiencies to.